Namaste. Welcome to my conversation with Sri S. Guru Murthy Ji. In part one, he explained the rise and fall of the Western development model. In part two of our conversation, he explained the prospects for India developing its own economic model. Now, in the third and final part, he will explain what is India's future in the world. Please watch. The West is now going to have huge human related problems. Mm. It may not have technological problems, it may not have other problems. Systemic problems it may not have, but the system itself will be weakened by human problems. Mm. Fortunately, Asia is able to handle the so called modernity without disconnecting itself from tradition. Mm. Japanese have been able to do it right, in a way, right. though Japanese problem is more because they didn't know how to handle the West except by copying the West. Mm. China is doing that now. See, because both of them do not have an original mm. philosophy. It's all brought from India. Bought from India. But the only thing is they it will not allow them to reconnect to India, though Japan is trying to do it in a big way now. Mm. China will not be able to do it. China is a shadow civilization of India. Mm. Except for statecraft, mm. its religion, its spirituality, its approach. In fact, there is a beautiful, we must get that reference. When some Indians, uh, Indian business people went to uh, China and they had a meeting with Mao. He asked them, you know, what is the belief of an average Chinese? These Indian people did not know. He said, I will tell you. Our people believe that to attain moksha, we have to be born in India. That is the <laughs> last birth. This is what <laughs> Masetung said. We should find that quote. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I and the same in the same way, it's the shadow civilization of America when it comes to technology and capitalism and the, the modern economy. Correct. China has gotten the civilizational stuff from India and the modern stuff from America and the technology. And they, they don't really, know how to combine it. Yeah, they, they don't know how to combine it. They have all these Confucian institutes and they have a lot of money to throw at it. But deep down, they don't have something integrated. You see, Confucius was more a sociologist and a statist mm. than a spiritualist. Mm. Yeah, he was. There's nothing spiritual. He was. He more constructed human relationships. Right, right, right. But he didn't construct a philosophy to connect with universe, nature. So this relationship was not grounded in a cosmic rhythm. Absolutely. It was. There's no idea of rhythm, dharma, and, and from that society. The idea of dharma still there in Japan hmm. because uh, Buddhism was very strong. Buddhism was very strong. And even today, for example, uh, Abe speaks of dharma. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but in China, the word dharma is not there. Right. So now I believe with the rise of India, it is not only incumbent on India to explain its way of life. What is its way of life? Philosophy decides the goal of life. Hmm. You cannot have a goal of life unless you have a philosophy. The goal of life decides your lifestyle. Hmm. Your lifestyle decides your habits. Your habits decide what you want or don't want. If you disturb the philosophy, everything gets disturbed. Yes. Your aim of life gets disturbed, your lifestyle gets disturbed, your habits get disturbed, what you want and don't want get disturbed. This is what has happened to most societies. So we must build the link between philosophy right down to how you live, what you want and don't want. This integrated approach is what is needed right. in India. And is built into the Indian way of life. Is and it is functioning. Yes. Actually yes. in India, this is a functioning model. Mm. That is why you know we live as a family, we live as a community. That is why for 6.6 .6 lakh, 6.68 uh, lakh villages and towns, you know how many police stations we have? 12,800 mm. police stations only. And in crime rates, we are one of the lowest in the world. Yes, actually they keep uh, talking about human rights, this, that issue. I did a study uh, where I got some Princeton graduate students to uh, during a summer to go and look at UN statistics and all that on crimes and all kind of violations. When you scale it per capita, India is one of the lowest. Lowest. For the murder, which is not a crime which can yeah. be concealed. Yeah. And many other kinds of uh, human rights issues 
per capita it is uh, lower than the lowest. Okay. Now, time has come. You see, this is now not a responsibility of Indians to India. Hmm. It is a responsibility of Indians to the world. To the world. Yes, because we have something to offer. Offer. When and a functioning form. When, when the other models have failed. In a functioning form. We yes. are not saying, come on, we will go and find in our archives what is good for you. Right. It is a functioning But model. it is for us to go and study it first. Study and explain it. it. Yes. Just, that we haven't done. Just an empirical travel for six years could make me familiarize myself with India. Imagine a deeper study of the Indian civilization, what it cannot do. So how about if the, if the HRD said that every student before he gets a graduation must take one year off and do this kind of study about Indian culture. So then he comes back, he can get it, he can, before he gets into the job market, this is like in some countries, they have military uh, service, one year military service. We could have one year uh, study of Indian civilization so as a kind of a part of your education. So that you create a next generation of people who have immersed themselves in Indian society, not sat in a classroom and read some uh, sociological models which are from the West, but actually gone to the villages or traveled uh, or worked on some in, uh, project which has to do with not the urban centers. First, this, this the could IAS be... officers and IFS officers will have to do that. Yeah. Minimum of minimum. <laughs> right. They should have, have this kind of service. In fact, when a relative of Mr. Raghuram Rajan asked me, what should Mr. Raghuram Rajan do? <clears throat> I said he must to take a travel across the country at least for six months. Then he can make policies for India. He comes straight lands into Delhi and then to Bombay and begins <laughs> making policies for India. It's kind of a such artificial, such artificial, a disconnect. artificial world. Yeah. Such yeah. a disconnect. Yeah. There is nothing. For example, somebody if comes from Delhi to make policies for Tamil Nadu. He cannot do it. Yeah. He must understand Tamil Nadu. Right, right. Without understanding this diversity, the government is making policies, educational institutions are giving courses, media is writing. There is a complete disconnect between what is in the public domain and how the people of India actually operate. Right. This is the disconnect that is actually limiting India's capacity to scale up. Right. And to tell the world that here is a model, you look at it. And I am of the view the world itself will become interested in India because if Indians become interested, naturally, at least some Indians becoming interested is also okay. Mm. But today, what I can say is this new political uh, dispensation has at least loosened the political hostility to India. Mm. There is no. We put in enough doubt about the previous model. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Disruption of the model. Yes. Now we have to do reconstruction of the R model. So my uh, sum and substance of my 30 year work in this is, of course I had worked in the most difficult times, mm. most abused. In fact, one person in uh, administrative staff college Hyderabad, he stood up and said people like you should be shot dead because you are taking the country backward. Mm. This was the kind of hostility we faced. It is no more that hostility. People are curious. They mm. want to know what. So I think the ecosystem is changing. Mm. But there is no institutional change. Right. There is no individual initiative mm. to take advantage of the ecosystem change. Mm. It's a it's some sort of a grassroots thing. Yeah. But uh, our our institutions are still the old way. Certainly, the higher education is. The school system is, the media is, IAS are like that, the UPSC exams are full of that kind of stuff. IIT Bombay, where I delivered a lecture in 2010, stating some of these points. The students came and said, sir, we know nothing about these things. You run a course for us. So I ran a course for four years for MBA students, 21 hours course. So they want to know. Mm. But there is no way the system can feed them mm. with the real knowledge. Mm. This is the disconnect I am seeing everywhere. Yes. That's a very perceptive, very, very perceptive. That you have two Indias. There is one, this is the India. And then there is this chasing the sensex economy. There is a performing India. And there is a publicity India. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so where do you locate? 
technology because this smartphone technology going everywhere to the villages also languages indian languages also which way is this acting as a force is it a top down force centralizing homogenizing connecting with global economy or is it empowering the grassroots see it is uh, uh, a lateral intervention in every place hmm. it is a lateral intervention even in family for example as it disrupted the family or as it unified the family it has unified the family because the indian families which are all over the world have <laughs> come on a whatsapp group right within the uh, country they have come together so this lateral intervention has solidified the social capital also it has on the one hand relationships relationships it has it has helped to rebuild so because you can have relationships across long distances and your skype and all that you know according to me the indians know how to <laughs> push electronics in sharbat and take it <laughs> they can they can mix the unmixable you know facebook with relationships over long distances making friend this guy that guy and connecting groups and all that uh, is a sort of a electronic version of the local what in when i was a child we used to go to the chai wala dhaba sit there and that was a local facebook kind of social group <laughs> to connect and to share notes and what not and uh, zuckerberg the founder of facebook gives credit he says that he was lost as to his vision what to do uh, he didn't quite know where to take his company in the early days and uh, steve jobs of apple told him you go to india uh, this is a place in uh, almora uh, uh, neem karoli baba's ashram Uh, Zuckerberg said this publicly when Modi and he had a, fa- a, a discussion on Facebook when Modi visited USA, and he said, "I have to admit that I, in that ashram, I got this idea of how people want to interconnect, and this idea of human beings all want to interconnect, who to connect, who to connect, what not, and there I got this idea that maybe I can do this electronically, uh, and people can be doing this what they are doing in person. They can. So this is very interesting." uh in a kind of a uh, force multiplier for this indian relationship idea using electronics that is one aspect now what about the other aspect that uh, also it makes things more efficient so the person who's producing something can look at what are the market rates uh, maybe maybe make it more efficient from a, from a market point of view from supplier you know you can have uh, less intermediaries maybe and more if, uh, efficient in marketing perhaps uh, but what do you think of other areas where i think there is harm for example knowledge what is considered truth about me or about uh, a certain topic uh, people will quickly look at wikipedia now wikipedia presents itself as democratic open everybody can input but that is not truly the case there is a hierarchy of privileges that different people have when they are submitting so if you submit something if you have a wikipedia page you submit something it will be subject to someone else overturning it so the i so ultimately at the top of the pyramid there are some western people who control the whole thing but underneath them there are others others there is a long hierarchy so everybody in the world is allowed to input and if it is very factual but is not uh, subjective it will be a good so good source if it's very factual you take pictures you know the exact uh, you know like if you want to know the dates of uh, uh, different presidents of india being sworn in it's not anything controversial it's just fact they will be accurate or if you want so any hard facts which are non controversial wikipedia is a good source but where it comes to interpretation and which view you accept and which theory aryan theory you accept aryan dividend divide or those kind of areas they have a bias so this is another aspect of uh, internet where certain people are be going to become more powerful than before because everybody in the world is dependent on this i think the the problem which you uh, visualize is definitely there it is there it is not that it is going to come it is there but i believe that uh, a huge shift will take place in india when indian see india rising that will give a psychological boost for them to build their own sources of for example there is a, 
in 1980s, Ramayana was shown on the television. Mm. That completely changed the landscape in mm. India. Likewise, there are many developments which can take place. For example, if somebody uh, now, uh, the person who wrote the book on Mahabharat, in, he has put everything on internet. Mm. What is, because our uh, written volumes are so huge. So it helps disseminate a lot of knowledge. Disseminate. Yes. So, there is no limitation on the capacity to reach people. And My that, feeling is, yes. even if 1% of the Indians get interested in these things, we can face the world. So, regarding the challenge to get 1% of Indians to contribute to knowledge, you know, it's very interesting that there was a time when we were knowledge producers and the world was knowledge consuming our knowledge, whether it's Nalanda, Takshashila, so many great things we did. And now, of course, uh, the Ivy Leagues and uh, Wikipedia and all these people claim to be the knowledge controllers and they own the intellectual property and they disseminate it and we become knowledge consumers, uh, even about ourselves. So, there is also a kind of a lack of confidence, maybe an inferiority complex or something that our people have that, you know, if I get this tappa from some guy in uh, the West, then it will be good for me. So. Everybody is clamoring to be in their journals, to get into those journals, you have to comply with their ideas, cite their resources. So, how do we uh, get a, a new kind of Swatantrata, a new kind of uh, uh, Swadeshi uh, in the knowledge field? This is a big challenge. See, in the, this is a challenge with multi-dimensional implications. I will take the poker and atom bomb explosion. When the poker and atom bomb exploded, Indians all over the world celebrated. Mm. Why? Because it is the roar of what they believed was a defeated civilization. Mm. India never turned back. From there, it slowly shifted to the head table of the global polity. Tara Sinha, who is uh, one of the advertisement icons of India, she used to travel all over the world. And wherever she went, she used to avoid hotels and used to stay with friends and relatives. This is what she had written in an article, which she wrote after Pokhran. That whenever I went abroad, millions of uh, Indians staying abroad, always used to abuse India. It's a rotten country, it's a dirty country, it's a backward country. But it all changed on that one day. Mm when India exploded poker and atom bomb. Because totally through an external intervention, mm. the confidence levels of Indians went up. Right. So, confidence levels of Indians going up by the very uh, outlet through which our confidence uh, was exhausted. Mm. Our, we lost our confidence. Through those very sources, confidence is getting built. Mm. This is the change in the ecosystem. Mm. Even this is not being perceived because the mainline media does not focus on the Indian confidence being rebuilt in civilizational terms, mm. in psychological terms. They are trying to attribute it to some small success of Indians in the startup. And the, see, again, the same tools by which they judge the success of India is that uh, toy-like tools. Right, right, right. So, now we have to shift it we, to… We are not uh, paying enough attention to the deep culture. And how there this manifestation is taking place. Yes, yes. So, I believe this will be not a standalone effort of India. We have to build a sort of a civilizational cultural fraternity. It exists according. So, that means Afghanistan, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Japan. Japan. Yes. I would include even Israel in this. Oh, yes. Yeah. Any non converting religion mm. is our non expansionist. Non expansionist. <laughs> yes. Our, in, the, in the theological sense. Yes. They may be expansionist in the political. Everybody is expansionist in the political sense. Right. 
theological expansion who doesn't have mm. they are our civilizational associate right we have to find a way by which we can bring together the last 100 150 years of how these civilizations have behaved mm. and you will find they were all great uh, affiliates associates and in a way admirers of india once this kind of alliance is built then you will find more and more indian recruits for this approach that mm. india has a global role to play for which it has to prepare itself i think it is it is a combination of change in the ecosystem which is taking place at the same time a kind of a civilizational alliance which we have to now promote and identify and connect and the third thing is we have to have at least some 200 to 250 identified people hmm. who will work in this hmm. paradigm hmm. for the next 3 years hmm. we should not get lost in many other things hmm. of course there are other thing i am not saying other things are important but this civilizational power being built by force multiplication hmm. we can bring in some educational institution we can bring in some business people you know it should not be seen to be the work of only recluses mm. it should be seen to be the work of stakeholders mm. those who have stakes in the business mm. in education in politics in uh, academics so we should have a kind of a rainbow kind of coalition mm. force multiplication mm. that will give credibility that's one of the things i mentioned to you about the indian school of economics right right i am trying to bring in the very people who were not seen to be for it hmm. when they are seen to be for it there are two things two im- kinds of impact is produced one everybody sees yes this is not one of those efforts of uh, some saffron people coming and doing right. it is the Mm, people who are at the age of modernity second thing they also see even they are interested in it mm. so this packaging is needed yes this optics is needed yes without optics we will not be able to recruit people perfect so this is where i would love to work with you thank you i think we should collaborate and uh, so what i want my followers to know is that this is a real treat for me to be here spending quality time with guru murthy ji and a treat for you uh, you should watch his videos and i think uh, as a result of this good conversation firstly i want to continue doing this every time i am in india i come 3 4 times a year there is far too much knowledge that you have to take out in one session so we need to do this more often and i would love to do that every time i am here thank you rajiv ji because i have been watching you for quite a while Uh, thanks to some of our mutual friends through whom we got introduced from that time onwards i have been noticing the fire in you you know without that fire you don't do these things mm. how you share that fire is more important than how you share your knowledge mm. you have to create uh, people with that passion and fire for that you will have to devise a kind of a an experience sharing session mm. what made you do on this mm. and what are the challenges how to do it no even if it means talking about yourself yes 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 i have actually and maybe i should Uh, with uh, but i've tried to stay out of uh, autobiographical because no, no, i'm no, just no 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 this sharing of experience is different from sharing autobiographical right thing. right 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 see experience is both good and bad hmm. autobiography is only good things about you <laughs> <laughs> so my feeling is yes. wherever i have for example uh, in um, in one university they spoke about this child labor and all that i was in that program i was the chief guest I said, you say child labor is bad, but for the fact uh, I was a child labor, I would never got educated. They were all stunned. He said, my mother used to make papad. I used to make papad along with her, and we used to work till two o'clock in the morning. I used to go and sell the papad as I was going to school. That is how I got myself educated. 
<laughs> yes. This can be a sharing of experience, or it can be an achievement. I was not sharing it as an achievement. I was sharing this my experience. So my feeling is, what made you do this? I think what because you have to see that spark hmm. lights up people. Hmm. Mere knowledge will not give that passion. Right. Knowledge may give ego. Right. But the passion to work, I think that you have to share. Hmm. Because I, I have seen you. Yes, I will so do that. So this is my request to you. I will do that. But I think that uh, uh, I also, at this late stage, I also need to transition uh, from whatever I'm doing to a successor group. And that successor group have to be young people in India. And that has to be an institution. So we need to depersonalize and turn this into something that can continue. I would like to create 108 young people who are thinking along these lines and continuing the thought. Some can be in media, some can be professors, some can be in IAS, whatever, different business type of people. But I would like to propagate, perpetuate and transition this for the future. So that it doesn't just vanish when I'm gone. Because one has to think of that. So I, Only, that, there also, I know you will follow the Indian way. We never trusted an organization to do. We always trusted an idea to be common for all, yes. not an organization. Yes. Because the organization has, is finite. Right. You are an infinity foundation. Yes, yes. You got to <laughs> see that knowledge becomes the infinite connection between people. Perfect. That is the idea of dharma so, ultimately. So I need your advice. I'll definitely. You as a guide, you as a friend. Uh, I want to come and uh, connect with you, collaborate. I, I'll, I'll do my best yes. because your area of operation is very vast and you extend into uh, the different uh, countries also. So I'll definitely do it. It will be my pleasure. And I want to thank you for that. Thank this you. is a this is a very important moment for us. Thank you. Coming together with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you much. Huh? Pranav. Pranav.